Hello guys, today we're going to be talking about an application for Android called APRS Droid. If you don't know what APRS is, I can briefly say that APRS is an amateur radio based digital communication system for local, regional, or long distance communications. Uh, tactical, real time exchange of information among all members of a net, including map-based displays for situational awareness. APRS is used to transmit real-time information such as messages, bulletins, announcements, and the locations of any stations or objects via amateur packet radio protocol. Real-time reporting of station position for mobile, uh, for mobile stations is facilitated using the Global Positioning System, GPS. Uh, APRS is capable of transmitting a wide variety of data sets, including weather, uh, sorry, weather reports, short text messages, radio direction finding bearings, telemetry data, uh, a storm forecast, uh, or, for example, these reports can be combined with a computer or mapping software to show the tr uh, transmitted data superimposed on a variety of map displays. And that last bit is exactly what APRS Droid does. So what I've done here is I've loaded up Scandinavia and part of Russia on my APRS Droid map. The map uh, at the moment is using Google Maps and these maps are uh, automatically downloaded via the internet. Uh, if internet access isn't available as long as you've set it up beforehand, you can also use static localized maps. Now each one of the icons you see throughout Scandinavia and some on Western Russia here represent either a station, uh, an object, uh, a person, uh, a repeater or digipeater, um, or any other type of object that uh, one could uh, display or transmit through APRS. APRS should enable local or global amateur radio operators contact at any time, anywhere, using any device. Now that is ultimate tactical communications. Uh, APRS Droid, as well as APRS itself, uh, has a backbone. Uh, like most other ham radio systems, APRS is fully integrated with the internet. Um, so you don't only have radio-to-radio -radio communications. So, for example, you see this map here. There's no radio connected to my tablet. Uh, all of these stations are coming in uh, to my tablet and to APRS Droid through the Internet. Now, the reason I'm using the Internet and not a radio is because as I make this video, I'm sitting here in the sauna, relaxing, enjoying the day, uh, and trying to make this video at the same time. Uh, I wouldn't like to bring radios and cables and things like that into the sauna. So if we quickly run through the settings of APRS Droid, you can get an idea of some of the things you can do with it. You can enter your call sign. Uh, in this field you have an APRS passcode, but I'm not going to show that to you. You can request a passcode on the internet. Uh, you have SSID. You can tell what type of station uh, you are in the network. There's quite many to choose from. You can also set up a symbol. We'll get back to those symbols later. Your comment field. Uh, if you don't put any comment at all, it'll say uh, the aprsdroid.org. Uh, your location source. So smart beaconing, uh, periodic GPS or network position or manual position. Location settings. So here you can uh, tell how your system should interact yeah, uh, with your speed, your position, and so on. 
If you want a little bit of privacy, you have an angry uh, boyfriend or a psycho girlfriend who's trying to figure out where you are, you can uh, set up some position ambiguity here. So that uh, it's close to where you are, but uh, it's not hitting a home run. Connection protocol. Now this is pretty cool. So as you see right now, I'm set up with TCP IP. That basically means I'm over the internet. Uh, UDP, uh, I don't use that. And I don't see any real point to it. Uh, one of the interesting ones here is, for example, this uh, AFSK by a speaker mic. Uh, now that will allow you to uh, connect, uh, well, you people with the Biofang UV5 bars. Uh, you don't need any any uh, anything but a cable between your tablet uh, or mobile phone and your UV5R. Um, you just need a cable, nothing else, no hardware. It's really cool. Um, this is another cool one, this Bluetooth TNC. So the Bluetooth TNC enables you to uh, either use a Bluetooth dongle uh, or Bluetooth to serial converter so that you can connect a radio without wires to your to your Android tablet or uh, you can get a Bluetooth TNC that's connected to your radio and connect your tablet to it, uh, APRS droid and tablet to it or smartphone without any wires at all. Of course, you can also use this uh, GPS port for the Kenwood radios uh, or a uh, at the, the last one here, the TCP, TCP IP TNC. And basically what that, what that is is a networked TNC. So there's a lot of uh, uh, really cool preferences here that uh, make sure that this APRS droid operates exactly how you want it to. Uh, and I have to say it's brilliant. But let's take a quick look at some of the menu items here in APRS droid. So the very first one you see here is uh, show the hub. We'll click that. And you can see all the stations here uh, that are coming TCP, TCP IP. As I'm normally connected with the radio, I would see almost the same stations. I see my neighbor there, and a uh, few of the repeaters are listed as objects. DG repeaters are listed, weather stations, uh, and so on. The next one here is uh, show the log. So what you see here is all of the data coming into the tablet or to APR Android right now. It would look rather similar uh, if it were coming through the DigiPeter over a radio. The thing that would change is uh, the path coming into my, my tablet. It wouldn't be over TCP IP. It would be through one of the local DigiPeters that I use. Next, you would see uh, the mes messages. Click that one. So now I'll show you the messaging functionality here. Through another device, I'll send a message to this screen that you're watching. There, screen. Uh, message popped up. Message for YouTube video. Whoops, I clicked the wrong one. Let's go back. Hello. There we go. So it just shows the message. I can reply to that message now by saying, for example, okay, thanks. Seventy threes. Click OK. It sends it out. I have it on my other screen here, which you can't see. Now this demonstrates the messaging functionality. This is really important, and uh, this is what my good buddy 
uh, eight digit PDX uh, asked me uh, for. Um, so I wanted to demonstrate that functionality. All right, this next button here, it's uh, show last. We'll go ahead and click that one. Now what the show last does is actually filters the data on the screen. Uh, I have it set up here to show the last two hours of data, but I can also set it up for the last 30 minutes, giving a more tactical view. Uh, my dogs are talking there. So this removes any old data, or older than 30 minutes anyway, and just shows me the information that I want. It's important, though, to have a kind of chronological view of the, the data, this real-time data coming in. Uh, because it's not only important to have what's happening now, but to see what has happened uh, for some time. That's also very important. This next uh, menu item here is called o Overlays. And we'll go ahead and click that one. Overlays allows me to uh, add or remove uh, APRS objects uh, or satellites. I like to have them there. But sometimes if I have a little bit too much data coming in, uh, well, I can filter also from, uh, from the network what type of data I want to come in. I can filter also by the distance. Um, so within 10 kilometers, 1 kilometer, hell, even 500 meters, it doesn't matter. I can filter how I like. Um, but anyway, that's with the overlays. And the last menu item we have here is called More. It just gives you, uh, well, you have the ability to uh, stop tracking or send out a position report, which is called a single shot. I can clear the log. I can change the preferences or view the about text. Um, so it's basically where a couple of quick functions that you use regularly are hidden there, as well as the... Uh, preferences. Those are the important bits.